Do you ever buy a kilo and a half of pretzels and then feel really guilty about the plastic tub afterwards? Because I do. That's a good intro. That is a habit I never had. For what it's worth, I do live in a family of four, so these didn't all go down my stomach exclusively, but I've got to do something about it. My name is Sophia Metropolis, and yes, I'm feeling guilty about this plastic. I try to limit my plastic use, plastic consumption, all that good stuff as much as possible, but you know, sometimes a kilo and a half of honey wheat twists really just it's an easy sell at costco if you're my mom and trying to feed me my adult brother and my father snacks that's just kind of what happens <laughs> a kilo and a half like isn't that ridiculous like 1.588 kilos that's like three pounds more than three pounds that's just, just so ridiculous oh, but these are so good like if you had these they're so good okay <laughs> back to the point we've had one of these before and we upcycled it to be a planter for some basil that we have in our backyard and basically i thought it would be a really nice idea to upcycle this into a planter but make it cute so i wanted to paint it but i had to know if posca marker was going to show up nice and opaque or if it was going to be a little more translucent than i want because you have to think it's clear, dirt is brown, so already we're kind of working with a brown background. I tested it by drawing a little star on the outside of that pot that we have already, and it looks so good. I'm super stoked. So I wanted to take you guys along as I decorate this. I don't have a plan. This is what it looks like right now. But first things first, we gotta get these stickers off. You ever think about that? So we have our bucket. It's bigger than my head, right? I mean, that's kind of crazy. I wish I could stick my head in it. And this actually would probably... Okay, I was thinking this would make a really good Spaceman helmet, but that's getting off topic. First thing I have to do is obviously take the labels off. I don't think I'm going to color on the bottom, but I'm still going to take this one off too. Hopefully they come off relatively easily. Now, because of this problem, something I may have to do is wash it under the sink just to get some of this water off. All right, that's somewhat problematic. Okay, I'm gonna go wash this under the sink and we'll be right back. Now that took longer than expected and um, I scratched the heck out of it. I tried multiple things. I'm sorry I didn't film it. To be honest, I didn't think it was going to be as eventful as it was. But ultimately, my dad helped me get the glue off with Bestine, and I did not have a plan for what I was going to draw on this. I was probably originally going to stick with some sort of mushroom imagery, something like that. But an idea that we came up with is, I'm going to do the Zodiac. Shout out to my dad for the inspo. So I'm not putting these glasses all the way up because then you'll see my ring light, and I feel like that'll be really distracting for you, but I like using them to see. Feel what I'm saying? Okay, let me know. So yeah, basically I was talking to my dad about what I should do as far as the drawing goes. I didn't really have an idea. And he asked what was happening in the world right now. And I said, it's Virgo season because all of my longest life friends are Virgos. And he said, why don't you do the Zodiacs? And I was like, that's a great idea. Anyway, I'm really excited. I feel like the vision developing in my head is getting just very exciting for me right now. So these are the markers I have to choose from. I want to do a pretty limited palette. And then I also have to remember, like I said earlier, the dirt in the bucket is brown because it's dirt. And there's like little specks of white in it, which are fertilizer, just normal dirt things. I don't know. And then also if the plant is growing out of its pot a little too much, you can start to see the roots around that. And if there's a little bit of condensation building up in the pot, there's also like kind of this condensation effect on the plastic, I guess. So I should take those things into account when picking my colors. Maybe a blue, maybe this blue. Mm, maybe that's a little better. That's not really a limited color palette, but you gotta have like shades, you know what I'm saying? Oh, that kind of looks nice. Is this the Zodiac vibe I'm going for? Okay, I don't think I'm using the oranges. I kind of vibe with this color palette. It's definitely not as limited as I thought. I think that's the move. I don't know if I'm gonna use them all, but I think this is the palette we're gonna work with. These are obviously highlights, shadows, and midtones. I could probably limit it down more but I kind of like them all together. Like that's like the, the vibe I'm going for. I grab this black paper sketchbook and hopefully we'll get a good swatch sense out of this. They definitely need some. Uh... Okay, this paper sucks.
This paper's super absorbent. So that's not what I was looking for. Try again. This one's a little thicker, maybe. There we go. Okay, <laughs> I did the most chaotic reference drawing I could. So there's that. I'm realizing what a large undertaking this is. So now I gotta plan it out. <laughs> this means some math, probably. So basically, I took a dry erase marker and made 12 quadrants, I guess, across the plastic tub just so I could erase it with my fingers and I separated them out in order of the zodiacs inside and I used this little star shape at the bottom of the tub that has six to be my guideline and then I started giving my outlines and kind of my base head shapes for each zodiac I ultimately decided that I didn't actually want to make each one a person. There were a handful that I wanted to kind of keep as their object or as their animal, while some of them became this anthropomorphic shape. I worked on Aries first. I literally went in order. So I started with Aries and then I went to Taurus, moved on to Gemini. I originally had drawn Cancer as a person and I discovered that you can erase by just scratching it off. So then I redid Cancer as a crab and moved on to Aquarius and then Capricorn. And then I started erasing a bunch of stuff and I did Scorpio. There's me doing some details on Aquarius. And it was really easy to erase everything with the dry erase marker. And then also, if you scraped the Posca marker, it just came right off. So it was a nice, easy way to be able to erase things. I was a little concerned about the streakiness that was happening, but I just kept running with it. If you let the Posca dry enough, you can go back in and draw over it, which is what I did. But you got to be careful because you can start to take some of it off if your marker is not wet enough. I finished the rest of the little detailing off camera just because... I was feeling like that and this is how it came out. I really do not like the Leo and I'm so sorry if you're a Leo that I did you dirty like that. But everything else I'm pretty satisfied with. It was a lot more challenging than I thought to do 12 small drawings and I did add in all of the constellations for each one just kind of around or near where they are just as some filler and then I hit it with some matte finish which made the plastic matte also but that's okay because honestly it kind of gets condensation-y anyway. Then I took my drill, my handy dandy drill, and drilled some holes in the top for some drainage holes. I drilled a bunch of them. I kind of had some fun just because, I mean, look at it. It's freaking fun. And they drilled pretty easily. And then I went in and got these golden pothos, pothos that I've been propagating and I am going to plant them. They have been thriving in this water for a really long time so I had this bucket of soil already that got kind of rained on last night so it was really wet and muddy and got stuck to my hands and like dug deep under my nails but that's cool that's cool I'm fine. It's not like I grew up in the city and don't like dirt on my hands at all. Uh, it's fine. That's why I. it seems like perhaps is a novelty thing. This is another planter that I drew on, but I just, it had dirt in it and no plant in it, so I just used that too. And then I repotted them. I was gonna do just one, but then I was like, ah, you know what? May as well do both. Look how satisfying that is. Like, wow. Oh, we love a little spiral root moment. I probably should have planted them a little bit better, but you know what? I like these plants because they're so easy to grow and they're pretty much the only ones that I can grow and propagate, and that's it. And then we took her inside and did some final studio shots and here's what they look like baby she looks so cute i put her up on my website i am actually really really proud of this i didn't expect to be except for the freaking leo i really don't like the leo i just kind of was off to a bad start from there and couldn't really solve it a lot of the streakiness got covered and some of it got kind of amplified but you know what that's okay i'm okay with it i think she looks cute i hope you enjoyed watching this video i hope you upcycle some of your own plastic into planters if you have some already or into something exciting it's fun to draw in plastic even though it's a little streakier than probably had I painted it. Anyway, please like this video and subscribe and comment down below if you enjoyed it. Let me know and I'll see you in the next one. Bye!